Why does life often feel so helpless and empty? Yes, yeah, so I find this question, it was quite sad to read the question because I can feel the emotions of the person who wrote it and they do feel that their life is helpless and empty. Hopeless and empty. Helpless it is actually. Yeah, I might have misspoken. Hopeless. Yeah, hopeless yeah. and empty. And so what I would like to do is just talk about some of the reasons why that's the case. Firstly, if our life feels hopeless and empty or helpless and empty, the first reason why is we're not feeling love. Mm. So we're not f open to feeling God's love and we're not open to loving ourselves. So, so there is an issue with our belief systems. There is an issue with what we believe in. When we believe in things that are false and we accept the false as true, in other words, we accept the false masquerading as truth, we often feel hopeless, helpless and empty. Mm. When we start accepting the truth, we start to feel very hopeful. And, and this, is a sub this is the result of this beautiful connection with God that we can develop. It can give us hope, hope that we didn't have before. And in particular, hope that there is love, that, there, that love is available to us and we can experience it. So people who feel helpless, empty and, uh, and hopeless are often also feeling unloved mm. and uh, they feel that nobody cares about them and nobody loves them, which is not actually not true. The truth is that God cares about them and loves them. They probably also have a spirit guide who cares about them and loves them. The problem is that they just can't feel them. Mm. So the real problem is that they are blocked to the reception of love. Mm. So a person who is in this condition needs to open themselves to the reception of love. Mm -hmm. And often they are very resistive to doing so. They also need to open themselves to the reception of truth. And they are often also very resistive to doing that. Mm -hmm. In other words, they wish to remain in a hopeless or helpless condition because they don't want to have to make a personal effort to get out of that condition. Mm -hmm. They want somebody else to come along and rescue them from that condition. Mm -hmm. Now, God waits for us to desire to get out of a condition before he sends someone to our rescue. So unless there is a real desire in us to get out of that condition, we will not be rescued from that condition. So we need to ask ourselves whether we sincerely wish to get out of that condition or we have become addicted to feeling hopeless and helpless and empty mm -hmm. as a way of avoiding our life mm. and a way of avoiding our experience and a way of avoiding ourselves and the environment in which we live. Yeah. And most people who feel these emotions are avoiding those four things. So what I would recommend to people who are feeling these particular feelings is to focus firstly on the fact that there is love available to, for them from God and also from their spirit guide, even if no one else on earth loves them. Right? There is truth available to them if they want to hear it. Mm -hmm. But they're going to have to exercise a desire to get out of this addiction to feeling helpless and hopeless and a desire to know the truth. They're going to have to exercise a personal effort. They can't wait until somebody comes and rescues them because nobody will rescue them until they have a desire to get out of their condition. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage them to do those things. Mm. Now, usually that is again an exercise of will. Mm -hmm. When we are addicted to being feeling hopeless or helpless or addicted to feeling like nobody is going to come and rescue us and nobody really cares, there are usually very strong addictions that we have mm -hmm. that we need to give up. And oftentimes we're very unwilling to give them up. So one of the things we will need to focus on is why is it that we wish to hold on to these concepts of the world and why is it we wish to believe something that is not true? Mm. Because God, the greatest being in the universe, loves us and therefore we are loved yeah. and therefore nothing is hopeless or helpless and we don't need to feel empty. Yeah. So I would encourage people to examine why they feel addicted to such emotions rather than actually being open to the reception of the truth, which is that God really does love them. God's got an immense amount of truth that God wants to share with them. And once they receive that truth, they're going to feel very hopeful. Mm -hmm. They're going to be able to be in a position not only to help themselves, but help others. Yeah. And they won't feel empty ever again. 
Yeah, I know from my own experience, uh, when I feel empty, it's usually because I've gone into so much suppression in avoidance of deep fears and terrors. Correct. Uh, that I just, I don't believe, I have the false beliefs that I can't handle. And so I suppress, the effort required in suppressing that suppresses absolutely everything, everything else. <coughs> mm -hmm. And it is empty. It feels like an empty existence because there is no mm. energy in motion. There's no emotion flowing anywhere. But let's, instead of focusing on what it feels like, yeah. let's focus on what caused it. Which, is which was, as you said, the desire to suppress Mm -hmm. some emotion. Mm -hmm. So a person often feels hopeless, helpless and empty because they desire to suppress how they really feel. They don't want to feel the pain mm -hmm. of how they really feel. Yeah. So they prefer hopeless, helpless and empty. Yeah. This is why I say it's an addiction. Yes. Because it's yes. In a way, a method that we use to avoid more painful emotions. Yeah. And a person who's going through these particular things needs to be honest about this as an addiction and see it as an addiction rather than seeing it as some kind of external thing that's going to change, that's going to cause them to get out of that condition. Yeah. So to recap what you've said, mm -hmm. you said feeling helpless, hopeless and empty. Is an addiction. It's an addiction. Yes. It, also, it comes from a belief in things that are false. comes from believing things that are not true. That are not true. You know, and particularly believing things about love that are not true. That are not true. And so there's a this lack of desire to feel love, to feel unloved, to feel all of these emotions surrounding love. Yes. You mentioned. And to face the truth about love. Face the truth that you weren't loved in mm -hmm. your childhood, but also face the truth that God loves you. Yes. That there's two truths there, you know, yeah. that you need to face. You might not have been loved by people on earth, but God loves you. Mm -hmm. So somebody does love you and you need to be open to that truth. Most people aren't open to that truth who yeah. feel these emotions. Yeah because they want to not feel an emotion. Yeah. They don't want to feel the pain of not being loved. Yeah. So that's why these emotions are addictions. They're not real emotions. Yeah. They're not causal emotions. They are emotions that we create because we wish to avoid causal emotions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yeah, great. So it's about addiction and avoidance, really. Yes, yeah. and while I have compassion for people who feel hopeless, helpless and empty, and I have in the past, gone through those emotions mm -hmm. to an extreme degree, I had to come to terms with the fact that it was all about me wanting to hold on to certain addictions where I wanted to believe nobody cared, nobody loved me and, <laughs> and so <laughs> forth. And also I was unwilling to feel True. when certain people yeah. didn't love me. Yeah. I was unwilling to feel the grief associated with that, the grief of loss, if mm -hmm. you like. And I, once I worked through the grief of loss and the grief and also work through receiving the truth that God st still loved me, yeah. then I got out of the hopeless, helpless feelings yes. and I no longer felt empty. Yeah. I, yeah. I felt positive and I felt like I had something to live for. Yeah, and that's a fantastic example for everyone. Yeah. The fact that you've done that. Yeah, and I feel that there are many people who will be attracted in the future to divine truth who do feel initially hopeless, helpless and empty, mm -hmm. but... Uh, that if they follow my advice and, and instead, of, instead of getting angry about it, yeah. um, they will find that they'll be able to see it as an addiction yeah. and start to recognise the truth about you know, the fact that they are loved mm -hmm. and also recognise the truth that they need to just feel some pain. They need to let themselves feel some pain. Mm -hmm. And if they let themselves feel and become sensitive to this pain, they'll actually feel also some pleasure. Because mm -hmm. at the moment, when we go into this heavy suppression, which is a person who feels these emotions always goes into, they are suppressing every part of the soul. Yeah. So you're not going to feel pleasure or pain once you start suppressing your pain. Yeah. And this is a principle that people need to keep in mind. Yeah. And, and I'd suggest that people who are listening to this answer need to examine how the human soul functions and particularly look at the areas of suppression mm -hmm. because it's the area of suppression that causes us to go into these states where we feel hopeless, helpless and empty, which are addictive states to uh, assist us in the suppression mm -hmm. and help, it helps us avoid the deep pain that's underneath the suppression. Yeah. We need to go into this pain and release it if we're ever going to be happy and hopeful. <laughs> And have a full life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you.